left Brother Steve. He loved us so much. He went to the Garden of Gethsemane, and he began to pray. Father, if, if it's possible to let this cup pass from me, then let it pass from me. Nevertheless, if not thy will, but, or not my will, but thy will be done. And he prayed so fervently, he began to sweat. And those capillaries began to rupture because of the intensity of the prayer. And it, he began to sweat, as it were, great drops of blood. Man, they arrested him. They took him to the, to the priest. They, they smote him on the face. They took him to Pilate. They falsely accused him. They plucked his beard out. They took that reed. They, they beat him in the face with it. They crowned him with a crown of thorns. They, carried, they put a cross on his back as the crowd, the crowd, many of them, I'm sure, I'm convinced, many of them had seen the miracles he did. Many of them, I'm convinced, some of them were probably even there at the feeding of the 5,000 and the feeding of the 4,000. Yet Pilate said, look, look, what do you want me to do with him? Crucify him, crucify him. Our Savior, our Savior, this great God that we've been singing about this morning. This great God, you know, I think one of our problems in church, we don't think about it enough, do we? You know, we, we've got it made in the shade with lemonade over here. We don't have to worry about somebody busting in the doors and persecuting us, throwing us in the prison, chopping our head off here in America. Do you realize that's happening to Christians all over the world right now, especially in the Middle East, just because they're Christians? Boy, don't you know their mind is on him constantly because they know any minute they might need him. Well, he carries that cross up that hill. Can you imagine him being beaten, just torn to shreds? With that cat of nine tails, that whip with them sharp objects in the end of each of the nine strands, and, and many times after that kind of beating, that body laid wide open. You could see organs, you could see, you could see the bones. He carried that cross until his feet and his hands fell out. That, that gave way. It fell beneath the weight of the cross. They got Simon of Cyrene to carry it the rest of the way. They got up to the top of that hill. There's a, a priest here and a priest here. There's a hole dug in the middle. They lay him down. Horses. He laid himself down there. They pierced his hands with those nails. Can you imagine that kind of pain? That's the great God we've been singing about this morning, folks. That while we were while we were singing about it, some were thinking, "Boy, I wonder if it's happened this morning in this church." Boy, I, I, boy, no, no, no. We already know. Why even ask? Hey, some were thinking, "Boy, that ECU sure did put a whooping on the Tar Heels." I'm a Tar Heel fan. Tar Heels will let you down. My God will never let you down. Amen. Some of you were thinking, boy, Pastor, Pastor, we had a little activity some at my house last night. Some of you were thinking, boy, Pastor just took me a bad number on that last burger. I'm sure I saw him sneeze on a burger. That's what you were thinking. Had your mind, are we singing about how great is our God? Our God's so great. Send his son to hang on that cross for us. Man, this awful, this awful that was. I've never seen that movie, but man, I can bring myself to watch it. I'm going to show you some YouTube videos of some preachers I had. My mom watched it. She said, Oh, you ought to watch it. Did, it, did you really see what he went through? I said, I don't really see what he went through. Mama, that'd be like, for me, that's like if, if you were in a store and, and there's a robbery and you got shot and killed and somebody said, hey, we got the video of your mama getting shot and killed. You want to see it? No. I don't want to see that. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong to watch that. I couldn't bring myself to, to see how, how awful it was that my Savior went through because of sin. Man, he hung on that cross for me. The Bible says, Every time I've told a lie on the cross, Jesus has suffered as a lamb. He has never lied. Every time somebody uh, 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 cursed God on the cross, he became a blasphemer. He said, this man is the son of God. The Bible says he was a son of God. Every time somebody's committed a fornication or adultery on the cross, he, he suffered as an adulterer as he was, he was tortured for it. Every time someone committed murder on the cross, he suffered as a murderer. For every sin, he failed. For every homosexual.
sexual act, and stuff with it as a homosexual, and she gets in big trouble. And the stuff that's come out of it. So every act of pedophilia, he suffers for that. It's the worst, the most vile thing you can think of. The worst thing you've ever done, the worst thing you've ever thought of. He took those sins on his own body on that tree. That's what God was teaching Moses that day in the morning. Do you realize that? Every time you rose up in rebellion against your parents as a young person, you suffered a rebellion. And on that cross, he took it. He took it on him. And every single man from eternity past to eternity future, he took our sin and he placed them on, on the body of his own son. And on that cross, I don't understand how it all worked. On that cross, Brother Joe, he suffered an eternity of hell for us so we wouldn't have to go there. How great is our God. Look for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. He's a great God. Hey, he's so great. Let me tell you something. He's so great. Joseph took him off that cross. He went and prayed the body. Hey, let me have the body of Christ. And Pilate said, all right, go get it. And he got up on the cross and he, he took those nails out of the feet, that nail out of the feet, took the nails out of the hands, and he came down with the body of the Savior. Took him to his own tomb and he laid him in that tomb and he washed those wounds and he wrapped him in a clean linen cloth. Three days, our Savior's body laid in that tomb, not showing any corruption. Oh, about that third day, I'll tell you how great our God is. That third day, those ladies went to the tomb. They were going to anoint his body for the burial. Uh, for the burial. They were a day late and a dollar short. When they got to that tomb, they were talking, hey, who are we going to get to roll that stone away? Man, it's been sealed. There's a guard there. Who are we going to get it to roll it away? And they looked, and oh, my goodness, it was already rolled away. Step down in there, and there's some some uh, fella sitting over on the side. Some angel of the Lord said, "Hey, what you doing down here? Why you seek the living among the dead? See, my God is so great. Not only did He die for us, He rose again for us. Amen. Hey, my God is so great that He says, for whosoever." means anybody, whatever you've done, wherever you've been, however rotten you are. And let me tell you something. Ain't nobody in here more rotten than me. Oh, yeah, preacher, I've done a whole lot more than you. You don't know what I've done up here. I, I've, I've, I've sinned just like everybody. We're all transgressed. It doesn't matter what you've done. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's a promise from a holy God. How great is our God. What, 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 is the service over? He's a great God. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Boy, he could have made it hard. He could have said, whoever, whosoever will live good enough. Anybody in here able to do that? Here's how good you have to live. You see, God's demand, his inflexible demand, he does not give way on it, is perfection. Anybody in here capable of that? Nobody. They said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He made it easy. He said, here's all you've got to do is call on my son and trust in him. Just believe. That's it. Hey, let me tell you how great our God is. His grace. It's great. Last week we preached, or last month we was preaching about grace, that unmerited favor. In other words, he loved me. The Bible says this, we love him because he what? First loved us when we were not deserving of it, when we were lost in our filthy by wicked sin, he still looked down and loved us. And in mercy, he said, you know, there's nothing in them that merits my, my saving them, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to make, son, you're going to die for them. All they've got to do is look to me. Grace. 
thank God I didn't have to earn it because I wouldn't be able to. All I had to do was expect it. My God's so great, he made it a gift. He just said, Here, here's salvation. How much does that cost? Oh, it's paid for. What do I have to bring? Oh, just yourself. What have I got to do? Just believe. Just, here, just accept this gift. Well, that's a great God. My God is so great that as a 13-year-old boy, when I realized the Bible says I'm a sinner, I'm not getting to heaven because Mama or God was able, because I didn't join the church, I'm in her Sunday school class. I realized I'm a sinner on my way to hell, and I got down on my knees. And I asked Jesus Christ to save me. Now, let me tell you how great my God is. When I asked him to save me, in the world is just justified. Let me tell you what that word means. You'll see it all through the Bible. It just means he declared me Say, oh, well, God will forgive you. No, hey, he did more than that. He did. Thank you, Julie. I'm glad I know I got one awake in here. He did more than just forgive. If I had to stand before God forgiven, I still stand before him with no merit. He did more than forgive. He declared me righteous. That's what justified is. Oh, when I knelt before God, here, hey, Good night. Where's somebody at? Come here, Brother Head. Come here, Brother C. Let me tell you how great our God is. Look here. It, this is a wicked sinner. I, you don't have to use your imagination. This is Jesus. Use your imagination. And I stand before God this day, lost in my sin unable to do anything to merit the favor of a holy God. Nothing I've done. Jesus stands on this side. Holy, 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 righteous, just, pure God. Here's what he did at salvation. Let me see if I can get my hand up and I'll stop. He took the righteousness of Christ Now when God the Father looks down, he says, man, you look just like my son. And the old stinking accuser, the devil, he comes and he says, hey, don't you know what this character's done? God blotted those things out. All I can see is the same righteousness that my son is clothed in. Hey, how great. Is our God, thank you, Bella. How great is our God? Preacher, you believe those things with all my itty bitty heart. I believe those things. My God is so great that that moment when I knelt down and accepted Him as my Savior, He justified me. He sanctified me, set me apart to be His child. He birthed me into the family of God. God, now listen, if you can get a hold of this, he's not just my God, he's my God. Although that would be enough. He's not just my Redeemer and my Savior, although that would be enough. Hey, he's, he's my daddy. He's my daddy. I have a daddy. Back in Charlotte right now, I believe, loves me, would give his life for me. And I have one who really would give his life for me if anyone could do that. Listen, my God is so great that no matter where I am, he's always with me. He he promised me. He would never leave me. He would never forsake me. He promised this. Promise that even if my father and mother forsook me, he would. I had a good guy. I came from a broken home. I broke it twice. And I had to learn 
to walk alone sometimes, walk with this Lord as a young man alone in the woods. And here's one thing I found out about him. He had never been saved. He was always there. How the great God this man. How, do you know him? I mean, do you know him? Has there ever been a time that you you, you realize, man, I, I, I'm lost, I'm on my way to hell, I need a Savior, and at that time with all your heart, you just simply called on the Lord Jesus Christ, placing your faith in Him, and at that moment you were birthed into the family of God. Do you know Him? If not, you're missing out. Well, preacher, I've done that. Okay, now, do you know Him? Do you know Him? My wife and I have been married 24 years, bless her heart. We're still learning each other. Still getting to know her. I know her now more than I knew her 24 years ago, and guess what? I love her more. She knows me now more than she knew me 24 years ago, and guess what? She tolerates me more. That's a great God that we serve. Let me tell you something else about this great God. I believe my God is so great, he's coming back. When's he coming? When he comes? I don't know when. Preacher, we're in the end times. We've been in the end times since he resurrected, so I don't know how much longer the end times is going to be. He's coming. He's just around the corner. Maybe so. I hope so. I don't know so, but I know this. He's coming. And I know this, if he doesn't come while I'm still alive, then I'm going. So either way, I've got it made. Because I'm just like Job, I'm not just like Job, but just like Job said, one day I'm going to stand before my God. I'm going to see him with my own eyes. that be? You could be going through all that without Jesus Christ. I remember as a little kid when I would get hurt, I would run to mama. You remember how as a child just running to mama made it good. When my kids want to play, they come to me. When they hurt, they run to mama. Because they know if they run to me, I'm going to say, suck it up, rub some dirt on it, you're not dying, but they're fine. Just a thought. Just curious. But Mr. Trent, just yesterday, and what's wrong, what's wrong, and I'll look, it'll be okay, just a little, no blood, just knock the bark off a little bit, just a little bird up. better. How's a band-aid make you feel better? If, a, if it does, and I'm putting one on my wallet to see if that makes me feel better. That's why I'm experiencing pain. Man, if we just just have that kind of care that we need. Would that be enough? Something about preacher I read said it this way. He said, I, I have a problem with someone saying they decided to trust Jesus. Didn't know, figured it was easy. 
he said, that's much like a man drowning in the ocean and throwing a life preserver for it and he decided to grab on to know that he couldn't take all he had and just leave it thrown out. He knew if I don't grab it, I, just in desperation, I, I grab that life preserver. And he said, that's how we come to Christ. When we realize, man, I, I've lost, I'm on my way to hell, there's nothing I can do. To, I, and we just throw ourselves on him and we flee to him. Our great God. the name of his hand and hold the sinner's hand. No man can pluck us out of his hand. The same God that saved us is the same God that afraid because we don't we don't stop to meditate as the Bible tells us to do many times to meditate on his word we can think about it sort of like a cat cow just stub poke a few over that stick but it's not how you you don't think about you just meditate on his word and that's not a sin if you finish that that's holy this whole month our faith has been rooted something for God. Last week we learned you serve God by serving others. You serve God by serving others and one of the best ways to serve others is to share Jesus with them. Man, the Seattle Church, we have this great, wonderful, mighty, magnificent, awesome God. working back there in that junior church with probably 50 kids. I don't know, but what they have, they're working for the podium and they're building a slow fire in the kitchen. Nicholas is back there, right? Then it's most likely happening up there if you smell the smoke. Thursday, the people gathered over here to serve the JV football team and play in one of the games. Share the gospel with a 13 year old boy who accepted Christ as his Savior and was saved in one year. Right now, there's missionaries in other lands telling people about Christ. I had Sunday school teachers that sacrificed their time to sacrifice with us to have a mystical Sunday morning to have a study for the first time. Selfies now, right? So, preacher, what can I do? Huh? Well, it's not just in these four walls. Hey, we meet here to strengthen each other, encourage each other. You go out that door, you've entered the mission field. I wonder who today you can show the love of Christ to. I wonder who today you can share the gospel with. Just because I serve a great God. I used to love Jesus this morning. Say amen. He said, if you love me, keep my commands. If we love him, church, we'll be a servant of servants. If we love him, we'll plow less than we can handle and be generous with the gospel. Not because we're worthy. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God. Our
our Savior, Jesus Christ, gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a peculiar people zealous for good works. We're going to do something a little different here at the closing time. Would you everybody please close your eyes there? Quitting, could you just come back up here?